Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and Stratomatic fans out there. Uh, as you know, Stratomatic came out with their new um, 2023 products, which includes the 2022 baseball season. It also includes the 1976 redone baseball season. And it includes several other things, um, Japanese All-Stars and uh, Negro League All-Stars. Um, I did a video previously where I went through and I looked at some of the computer cards of the 2022 players. Well, I also, as many of you out there may know, ordered the 1976 baseball cards. I did not order the computer game or the computer rosters, just the cards themselves. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at some of the cards, the interesting players from 1976. Got them right here. A uh, couple of notes um, that things that I've noticed um, and in connection with a couple of things that I heard. Um, first of all, I had read, I think, on Stratomatic's website that they said that the card quality this year uh, for the cards was better than in the past. I don't know that that's... I'm, I'm not sure what in what way the card quality is better because you can see these cards are... They're bowed up um, slightly. They're... They're the same flimsy, um, almost paper-like quality that they have been in the past, as far as I can tell. It, there's a possibility, and I'm I'm going to, you know, delve into this more when I get into breaking down the 2022 set, because I've already broken down the 1976. Um, there's a possibility that these cards don't stick as much. Remember how you would, like, you you know, you you rifle through the cards and sometimes they would stick to each other. These don't seem to stick as much. So if that's what they were talking about, well, I mean, to me, that's the lesser of two evils. I would rather have, like, the cards be more like cards than um, paper. But anyway, um, and th th another thing of note, is that they use different font this year, at least uh, for the players' names. Let me see. Yeah, the players and the teams. The player and the team names, it's a different font. I'm not sure if going down the cards, it's a different font, you know, like where you, where they have the readings off the card of what, what, you know, what it is, a double or whatever. I don't know if that, all of that is different font, but the names and the... Uh, the names of the players and the names of the team seem to be a different font. I don't know why. Um, I don't know if that had any useful utility. I mean, every once in a while, they like to change things up a little bit. Like how now the, uh, the font is on the cards is on the, on the uh, basic side of the cards is like a dark gray or charcoal or, you know, whatever. And before it used to be blue, they went from blue to like a charcoal color. So I don't know, maybe it's just something that they're doing to trying to change things up a little bit. But anyway, we're going to get into looking at some of the interesting player cards from 1976, starting right now. Well, here we go. We're going to take a look first at some of the interesting hitter cards from 1976. And then we're going to look at some of the pitcher cards that I have picked out from 1976. And then we're going to look at a bonus card. And so you want to stay tuned for that because the bonus card is going to be last. But um, let's take a look at uh, the hitters first. First hitter I'm going to look at is Bobby Valentine of San Diego. And the reason I'm looking at his card is because he hit 367. Now, true, it was in 49 at bats, but he did hit 367 with a 438 on base percentage. That's what the front of the card looks like. 
And this is the back of the card. I mean, this dude has some serious on base. You know, one thing I toyed with uh, in the past, and I've never really done it, is taking a card like this, or maybe a group of cards like this, where a guy didn't have a lot of at-bats, but he had great stats and a great card for the time that he played, and just playing the guy like, like starting him playing them all season even though it's not realistic because we all know Bobby Valentine would not have hit 367 if he had played all year the next guy we're going to look at is um, Steve Garvey here's Steve Garvey on the front just because he's one of the more common players that people associate with 70s he hit 317 and 631 at bats and then this is what the uh, back of the card looks like for Garvey. Obviously a good card. And on the back, he's a first base 1E3. Although he was a good defensive first baseman. Everyone knows that. The next one we're going to look at is Jose Cruz of Houston. And uh, he hit 303 this year with a 377 on base percentage. There's the front of the card, and there's the back of the card. Very good card. Next one we're going to look at is Johnny Bench of Cincinnati. Really good card for him. 16 home runs. So that's what it looks like on the front. And he was a catcher one. And he was a catcher one with a negative three arm. And here's what the back of the card looks like for Johnny Bench. And you can see what I'm, you can kind of see what I was talking about with the font. It does look like the font, especially on the back. Uh, it's not only the player names, uh, but also the, um, but also the, you know, it goes into the, you know, the results on the card. Here's Joe Morgan, second base, two, double A Steeler, one to 17 running, 320 batting average, and 27 home runs. And then this is what the back of his card looks like. Of course, Joe Morgan, one of the better players of his era in the Hall of Fame, and he was also an announcer on ESPN's uh, Sunday Night uh, Baseball quite a bit. And Pete Rose, his teammate, Pete Rose, who hit 323 with 10 home runs. And that's where the, uh, and let's see, he had a 404 on base percentage. So that's the front of the card for him. And there's the back of the card for Pete Rose. Next guy we're going to look at, not an impressive card just because I like his name, Biff Pokoroba of Atlanta. And uh, he only had 174 bats, hit 241. There's the front of his card. And there's the back of his card. And his teammate, Dale Murphy. Mighty Dale. Catcher three. And uh, 65 at bats. This might have been uh, Murphy's, because um, you don't see he only had zero home runs. This might have been his uh, rookie year. I'm not sure. But flip it over and then here's the back of his card for 1976 for Dale Murphy. And of course he started as a catcher and then later moved to the outfield and was a gold glove outfielder. Not a very good defensive catcher though. Lou Brock, one of the uh, big names from the 70s, 60s and 70s. Hit 301 that year. Double A Steeler, 1 to 17 running. And there's the back of the card for Lou Brock. And of course, like I, you know, I've said before on videos like this, you can stop the video anytime you want to get a, you know, stay on a guy and look at him a little more. Here's Gary Maddox. Two thirds of the world is covered by. 
water, and the other third is covered by Gary Max, and he hit 330 this year. Stealing a wonderful 17 running, and then there's the back of the card. Very good card. This might have been one of his better years, maybe his best year. Then you got Michael Jack Schmidt, third base one, hit 36 home runs, 107 RBIs. And there's the front of the card. And there is the back of the card. And another guy with a lot of home runs, Dave Kingman, 37 home runs this particular year, played for the Mets this particular year and that's a nice front of the car right there especially the three column obviously and then here is the back of Dave Kingman's card then you got John Milner of the Mets He hit 271, had 15 home runs and 443 at bats. Would later go on to play for the Pirates, the 1979 We Are Family Pirates. Next guy we're going to look at is Oakland's Gene Tennis. This was, I think, 76 was the uh, A's were still good, but they were on their way out. I think. But anyway, he hit 249 that year, 373 on base percentage. Uh, catcher three, but with a negative one arm. And there's the back of the card for him. Now, this guy, Glenn Borgman, I want to take a look at him because 65 at bats. He hit 246, but he had a 417 on base percentage, which is crazy. And here's what the back of the card looks like. All those walks, man. Look at all those walks, especially against righties. I mean, he's got a few hits against lefties, but man. Why, why were people walking that guy? Rod Carew, of course, one of the big players of the 70s. Nine home runs, 605 at bats, hit 331. Double A Steeler, 1 to 17 running. That's the front of the card. And there's the back of the card. And now you got George Brett, Kansas City, 645 at bats, 333 batting average. And there's the back of his card. Now we're going to look at Hank Aaron. I think this was Hank Aaron's last year. He was on the Milwaukee Brewers. Left field four. And this was also, I think, before the DH as well, I think. So he hit uh, 229 with uh, 271 at bats. And uh, and still had 10 home runs. I mean, he was really, by this time, he was just about washed up. But, uh, yeah, there's his card. And the last batter we're going to look at is Reggie. Reggie Jackson. But this is the Baltimore Reggie Jackson. The little known Baltimore Reggie Jackson. Because he only spent one year there. He hit 27 home runs in 76 in 498 at bats. And then there's the back of his card. So now we're going to look at some pitchers. On Houston... You got J.R. Richard. Of course, in this particular season, he wasn't as good as he was near the end, right before he had the uh, string of injuries and the health problems. He was 20 and 15, but he had a 275 earned run average, and you can see a lot of walks here. He walked 151 guys. And uh, there's the back of the card.
And next we got another guy that walked a lot of people, John D'Aquisto for San Francisco. And he walked 102 guys and 106 innings pitched. 535 earned run average. How do you get 106 innings pitched when you're walking 102 guys? And then you can see on the back, there's all those walks. They're all over the place on the back. Again, he'd be another guy. Would be interesting to put in the starting rotation all year long and pitch him all year long. The next guy we're going to look at is a Pittsburgh pitcher. Little known reliever, Dave Justy. And the reason I'm looking at Dave Justy is because... Um, my father actually faced him a couple of times uh, in like junior Qantas or, you know, like just before high school. Uh, he was on, Dave Justy was on a team from another town, like a nearby town. And my uh, father played for a team in Liverpool. And Dave Justy had a no hitter going and my father pinch hit and got a hit off of him. And years later, they were at a banquet. And here's the back of Dave Justy's card. Years later, they were at a banquet. And he came up to my father and he said, You're Bob Zolke. And my father was surprised he even knew who he was. And Dave Justy said, I know everybody who breaks up my no-hitters. <laughs> so anyway, there's that. Next picture we're going to look at is Steve Carlton, lefty. And uh, this particular year, he's in 76, he struck out 195 guys in 253 innings. 313 earned run average. And there's the back of the card. And next guy is Jerry Kuzman on the Mets. And we're going to look at another Met in a minute here. 21 and 10. 269 earned run average. And that's a nice back of the card for Kuzman. And then his teammate, Tom Seaver. And Tom Seaver was 14 and 11 with a 259. And there is his card on the back. Next guy we're going to look at is Noli, Nolan Ryan. There's Nolan Ryan with California. He was 17 and 18 with a 336 earned run average. He struck out 327 guys in 284 innings, uh, but he walked 183. And so this is what he looks like on the back. And uh, this, a look at the 76 set wouldn't be complete without a look at Mark Fidrich, the bird. Rookie year, the only good year that he had. Where he was 19 and 9 with a 234 earned run average. And that's what the front of the card looks like. And there's the back of the card. And the last guy we're going to look at is Jim Palmer, Baltimore. He was 22 and 13 with a 251 earned run average. Now, he's not the last guy we're looking at. There is a bonus card that's not 1976 that we're going to look at in a minute. 40 starts. And there's the back of his card. Now, the bonus card we're looking at is, if you remember, I told you in a previous video, that I had sent off for my pitcher card. And I will link to that in the description. I sent to Stratomatic to have my personal pitching card made based on the stats that I gave them. And here's the card. And that's the front of the card. I gave them, here are the stats. I gave them 12 and 12 with a 487, or is it 467? Four, Let's see, what is that? 467 earned run average, 24 starts, 179 innings pitched, 183 hits, 17 home runs allowed. 
And that's the card they came up with. for You know, for the statistics I gave them, this is a pretty good card. So, here we go. That's what, the, what I look like on the back. That's the back of my pitching card. Yeah, you might want to focus on that for a little for a little minute. So we'll see we'll see what I do with that. I may actually put myself in a game, but I hope you enjoyed this look. That's the look at all the the seventy six cards that I'm going to look at um, in this video and my my pitching card, my personal pitching card, and that is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z Bob Zolke, signing off.